Good morning, America. Today is Monday the 8th. It is 9.48 a.m. We're going to finish up uh, 2 Kings chapter 8. It was a 29-verse chapter. And we stopped at verse 14, I believe. But we're going to go back to verse 13 and repeat it from there. Actually, I'm going to go one verse back, verse 12, and remind you of that and continue on. The remaining chapters here are silver for history, and we do have just two verses of black, verse 18 and verse 27. And we have one more additional verse of gold for prophecy, and that will be verse 19. We will be reading it both from the Rainbow Bible as well as the New International Bible. Okay, verse 12 is gold to 14, and I'm going to repeat that to you in both Bibles. And it says, Hosea said, Why weepest my Lord? And the word Lord is written in lowercase lettering because the individual is addressing another individual. When you see it in the Bible written in uppercase lettering, that refers to the Lord God or the Lord Jesus Christ. And Hosea said, Why weepest, my lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their stronghold will thou set on fire. Their young men will thou slay with the sword. And will thou dash their children and rip them, rip up their women with child. That means they will rip the children out of the womb. 13. And Hosea said, But... What is thy servant a dog, that he would do this great thing? And Elijah answered, The Lord has shown me that thou shalt be king over Cyrus. So he is telling him of all the things that will happen to the people of Israel. He is also uh, prophesying that he will be the new king of Cyrus. 14. So he departed from Elisha and came to his master who said to him, what say Elisha to thee? And he answered, He told me that thou should surely recover. Let's take it from here, verse 12 to 14. Why is my Lord weeping, asked Hosea? Because I know the harm that you will do the Israelites, he answered. You will set fire to their fortified places, kill their young men with the sword, dash their little children to the ground, and rip open their pregnant women. 13. Hazina said, how could your servant, a mere dog, accomplish such a fit? The Lord has showed me that you will become king of Aram, answer Elisha. 14. Then Hosea left Elisha and returned to his master. When Ben-Hadden asked him, What did Elisha say to you? Hosea replied, He told me that you would soon certainly recover. 15 is the next verse, and we will read it from here first. 15 to 17 is silver for history. And it came to pass on the morning that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it on his face so that he died. And Hosea ranged in his stead, 16. And in the fifth year of Horam, Horam, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to range, 17. Thirteen and thirty-two years old was he when he began to range, and he ranged eight years in Jerusalem. So let's take it from here. Fifteen. But the next day he took a thick cloth, soaked it in water, and spread it over the king's face, so that he died. Then Hosea succeeded him as king. Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Sixteen. The sixth the, in the fifth year of Jerom, son of Ahab, king of Israel, when Jehoshaphat was king of Judah, Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, began his reign as king of Judah. 17. He was 32 years old when he became, when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem only eight years. 18 is a black verse for sin. And he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, as did the house of Ahab. For the daughters of Ahab was his wife, 
and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, so that he was considered to be an evil king among the kings of Israel. Okay, 18, we'll read it solemnly. He walked in the ways of the king of Israel as the king of Ahad had done, for he married a daughter of Ahab. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. 19 is a gold psalm, continuing on. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake, as he promised him to give, a, give him always a light and to his children. Read it from here. 19. Nevertheless, for the sake of his servant David, the Lord did not willingly to destroy Judah. He had promised to maintain a lamp for David and his descendants forevermore. 20 to 26 is nothing but silver. Pay attention. In his days, Edom revoked it from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. This is the things that are happening. Okay. So Jerome went over to Zophar. Zoar and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night and smote the Edomites which compassed him about, and the captains of the chariots and the people fled into their tents. 22. Yet Edom revoked it from under the hand of Judah unto this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. So there, there was a series of conflict and revelation, revolution, revelations and, and uh, Fighting among the people during this time. Okay, 26, 23. And the rest of the acts of Jerome and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chariots, the chronicles of the king of Judah? 24. And, and Jerome slept with his father and was buried with his father in the city of David. And Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. 27. In the twelfth year of Jerome, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. 26. Two and twenty-two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem, and his mother was named was Atalia, the daughter of Arm, Omri, king of Israel. All right, so let's take it from 20 to 26 here. In the day of Jehoram, Edom, Edom rebelled against Judah and was set and set up his own king, 21. So Jerome went to Joaz with all his chariots. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he rose up and broke through by night. His army, however, fled back home, 22. To this day, Edom has been in rebellion against Judah. Libna revoked, revoked it at the same time, 23. As for the other events of Jeroboam's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? 24. Jeroboam rested with his father and was buried with them in the city of David, and um, Ahaziah, his son, succeeded him as king. If you notice, evil kings normally do not range for very long. Only the good kings can range for long time 40 and 35 years 45 years 50 years those are good kings um but those that are young and evil kings and those that do the things that are detestable in the sight of god normally range for a very short amount of time and this was just in a biblical time okay um moving on to 27 and he walked in the ways of the house of Ahab and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab, for he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. 27. He walked in the ways of the house of Ahab and did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done, for he was related by marriage to Ahab's family. 28, 29. Uh, silver. For history, and he went with Joram the son of Ahab to the war against Hosea, king of Sarias in Ramah Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. Twenty-nine, and King Joram went back to 
be healed in Jazrael's of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah, when he fought against Hosea, king of Cyrus. And Hosea, the son of Jeroham, king of Judah, went back to see Jerem, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. So, let's end this off for 28 and 29. Twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Twenty-eight is over here. Ahaziah went with Joram, son of Ahab, to war against Hosea, king of Aram at Ramagilion. The Aramites wounded Joram, twenty-nine. So King Horam returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds the Arabians had afflicted on him at Ramah in his battle with Hosea, king of Aram. Then Hosea, son of Jeroboam, king of Judah, went down to Jezreel to see Jeroboam, son of Ahab, because he had been wounded. Okay, so these are the different situations that came about with different leaderships as it is today. Uh, every time you get a different leader, you get different situations, different laws are uh, implemented, and some leaders can implement laws that are good in the sight of God, and some leaders can implement laws that are detestable in the sight of God. And as you can see, this can happen both in the biblical time as well in our times today. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water, and as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you, and may the will of God, for whatever your life is, may come from you. Until the next time, enjoy this beautiful rainy day.